Good morning. Welcome to the Cathedral Church of All Saints in Halifax, Nova Scotia on this March 17th morning. Thank you for praying with me this morning. Today we remember Patrick, missionary bishop in Ireland. And according to For All the Saints. Today we honor Patrick, the patron saint of Ireland, who brought Christianity to the northern tribes of that country in the early fifth century. A native of Cornwall, or Devon, he was kidnapped by Irish pirates who sold him into slavery in their homeland. Six years later, he fled his Irish masters, returned to Britain, and was eventually ordained to the priesthood. He had a vision that he would return to the land of his former captivity, and around the year 438, that vision came true. He was made a bishop and given charge over the mission of the Irish. Despite his chronic sense of personal unworthiness, Patrick proved to be an effective organizer and his mission quickly evolved into a vibrant institution. He also encouraged the growth of Irish monasticism and within a few generations of his death, monks and nuns had replaced warriors as the heroes of the Irish people. The great hymn called St. Patrick's Breastplate was probably not composed by him, but it does reflect the kind of Christian spirituality that he planted in the heart of the Irish nation, a spirituality deeply penitential, but still more deeply alive to the sustaining presence of Jesus Christ. Now, as we gather our thoughts and prayers together, Christ came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near, for through him both of us have access to our spirit, access in one spirit to the Father. Reading from Psalm 71. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me and rescue me. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be to me a rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me. For you are my rock and my fortress. Rescue me, O oh my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of the unjust and cruel. For you, O oh Lord, are my hope, my trust, O oh Lord, from my youth. Upon you I have leaned from my birth. It was you who took me from my mother's womb. My praise is continually of you. I have been like a portent to many, but you are my strong refuge. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all day long. Do not cast me off in the time of old age. Do not forsake me when my strength is spent. For my enemies speak concerning me, and those who watch for my life consult together. They say, pursue and seize that person whom God has forsaken. For there is no one to deliver. O oh God, do not be far from me. O oh my God, make haste to help me. Let my accusers be put to shame and consumed. Let those who seek to hurt me be covered with scorn and disgrace. But I will hope continually and will praise you yet more and more. My mouth will tell you of your righteous acts, of your deeds of salvation all the day long. Though their number is past my knowledge, I will come praising the mighty deeds of the Lord God. I will praise your righteousness, yours alone. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever.
A reading from the Gospel of St. Mark. He said to them, Is a lamp brought in to put under the bushel basket or under the bed, and not on the lampstand? For there is nothing hidden except to be disclosed, nor is anything secret except to come to light. Let anyone with ears to hear listen. And he said this to them, Pay attention to what you hear. The measure you give, those who have more will be given. And from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. He also said the kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces itself, first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables he spoke the word to them. As they were able to hear it, he did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The word of the Lord. Lord Almighty and God of our ancestors, you who made heaven and earth in all their glory, all things tremble with awe in your presence before your great and mighty power, immeasurable and unsearchable, in your promised mercy, for you are God, most high. You are full of compassion, long-suffering, and very merciful, and you relent at human suffering. O oh God, according to your great goodness, you have promised forgiveness for repentance to those who have sinned against you. The sins I have committed against you are more in number than the sands of the sea. I am not worthy to look up to the height of heaven because of the multitude of my iniquities. And now I bend the knee of my heart upon you, imploring your kindness upon me. I have sinned, O God, I have sinned. And I acknowledge my transgressions, unworthy as I am, you will save me according to your great mercy. For all the host of heaven sings your praise, and your glory is forever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Let us affirm our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. 
for the one holy Catholic and apostolic church throughout the world. Lord, hear our prayer. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. For those preparing for baptism and for those their teachers and sponsors, for the peace in the world, that a spirit of respect and reconciliation may grow among nations and peoples. God, hear our prayer. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and all in danger, that they may be relieved and protected. God, hear our prayer. For all who have we have injured or offended, for grace to amend our lives and to further our reign. God, hear our prayer. Artist of souls, you sculptured a people for yourself out of the rocks of wilderness and fasting. Help us as we take up your invitation to prayer and simplicity so that the discipline of these 40 days may sharpen our hunger for the feast of your holy friendship and whet our thirst for the living water you offer through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us together pray the prayer that our Lord has given us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. As we forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin us against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. May God, our Redeemer, show us compassion and love. Amen. Amen.